Good evening. Welcome to the Cardinal Spellman Commencement 2017. This evening we begin the same way we do at any event here at Cardinal Spellman, calling to mind our faith in our God who saves us and who continues to provide for us here at Cardinal Spellman. And so I welcome Deacon Joe. Please join me in praying for the class of 2017. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. My brothers and sisters, we gather here today to acknowledge and honor the Cardinal Spellman High School class of 2017. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of their many accomplishments. Inspire these young men and women to dedicate themselves to be even more successful in their future academic endeavors. Help them, dear Lord, to enjoy this present moment while maintaining a healthy perspective on the future. Give them the spirit of humility and joy with a generous amount of courage and patience to persevere when confronted with difficult obstacles. Lord, it is so difficult for us to say goodbye to these talented and gifted young people. It is hard to let this class go, for they have been very special to us and added so much to our lives. However, new adventures await them, and we must let them go. With great joy and some sadness, we begin our commencement exercises. May God bless the class of 2017. Amen. Amen. At this time, we invite some of the singers from the senior class to please come forward to these steps right here to lead us in our national anthem. That was beautiful. We're going to miss your voices very much. Thanks, you guys. I invite everyone to please have a seat. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. So I figure it's our job to defy the weather tonight, to turn this ceremony into a true celebration. This may not be Carnegie Hall. And the gray skies may have prevailed, but this is Spellman. And nothing can stop us from having the best graduation ever. It's all about a positive attitude, and that, my friends, is undeniable here. If we've got anything here at Spellman, we've got spirit. 
So before we go any further, I want everyone in this auditorium to please give a big shout out to all of our guests who are across the way in the gym who are also part of this exciting evening. So one, three, let's say hello to everyone across the way. One, two, three. Hello. Let's get the celebration started. So please allow me to extend my very warm welcome to Mr. Dan Hodes, our president, Ms. Geraldine Mahoney, our board chair, members of our board of trustees who are here this evening, our amazing faculty and staff, parents, friends, and of course, mostly, the class of 2017. Welcome. It is my distinct honor and privilege to officially begin the festivities of this wonderful event as we celebrate this most significant day in the lives of 166 graduates. Some previous classes have had strong collective identity and will be long remembered for their qualities as a group. Some will remember, oh, that was that athletic class, or, oh, I remember that was that really smart class, or, oh yeah, that was that really spirited class. But I think the true strength of this particular class lies in the uniqueness of each and every one of you as individuals. And I predict you will be remembered as a group of extraordinary individuals. Let's fast forward a few years. I suspect on your 10th year Spelman reunion, it'll be very fascinating, to say the least. What will Joe Sue be doing with all those talents? What will Danielle be doing with her beautiful heart for service? What will Mike or Jimmy be up to with their natural leadership qualities? How will Ethan be using that booming radio announcer voice? And what will Big Kev be doing with all his awesomeness? <laughs> and what will each one of you be doing with the gifts that you've been given? I, for one, can't wait to see what the future holds for all of you. Truly, you are a group of amazing individuals. So, anyway, as graduation speeches are supposed to be about passing along words of wisdom, I, as your principal, want to leave you with something memorable, something significant. So it came to me. You ready for this one? Here it is. Get off the phone. I mean it, put your phone away from time to time in your life. Live life through a lens that is bigger than the palm of your hand. Live life through a lens that has meaning and purpose and spontaneity and authenticity. Honestly, you can't really do that well when you're looking down all the time. So look up. Live in the moment. Foster real relationships that are guided by your heart, not your fingers. Don't view the Grand Canyon through a three-inch screen. Savor that experience. Take in the grandeur of the Grand Canyon, or whatever that may be, and let it overwhelm you. Let it inspire you. Let it change you. Don't worry so much about capturing that moment on Snapchat. Capture it in here. That's what really counts. Find the answers to life's mysteries by asking the right questions and listening to the many possible answers. Believe it or not, you won't find all the answers on Google. Don't shortchange yourself. Discover the answers by reflecting and contemplating the deeper meaning. And in those most difficult times in your life, literally, Put the phone aside and look up. In fact, put everything aside. The answer you are looking for inevitably will be up there. You are, <clears throat> excuse me, you are an amazing group of individuals and collectively you've made Cardinal Spellman a better place. We are blessed that you came here and now we send you off with confidence and our prayers for a life of true joy 
and deep peace. God bless you. Thank you. So now let's get this graduation ceremony officially started. I know how anxious you are to get that diploma in your hands and to toss that cap in the air. But before we do that, we have a few things to do. And the first thing to do, and it is my honor to present to you the salutatorian of the class of 2017, the one and only remarkable Elizabeth Child. I've always found it funny that schools have students speak at graduation. To bring wisdom and insight to a class of peers seems impossible, as I'm in the same position as nearly everyone sitting here today. We're all standing at a crossroads and are hoping that the path that we have set for ourselves will, make, will take us in the right direction. I can't pretend I have sage advice to give. I've never been in this position before. The advice I will give instead does not come from me, but from the people who have been giving us wisdom since day one of our high school careers. My fellow classmates, there is plenty we can take from our teachers here at Cardinal Spelman High School. When we're searching for meaning in life, we can remember Marble writing, dig deep in big red letters on all of our essays. Everything has a meaning and purpose, but we'll only be able to see it if we're willing to search for it. When we're trying to work through a difficult problem, we can fondly remember Miss Connor telling us, climb up your elbow and think with your pen. <laughs> the answer's not always going to be right in front of you, so take life with a head-on approach. If life's getting a bit too serious, we can remember that Mr. Daly and Miss Ballard taught us the importance of having a sense of humor, especially when you're learning something. And if anyone ever tells us to forget a number, we know from Miss Lawsey that that is an impossible task. Miss Davis taught us to take joy in every new discovery about the world. Mr. Malo taught us to avoid unnecessary frills in order to arrive concisely at a point. Senora Holt, Senora Woodward, and Madame Donovan taught us to be aware of and take part in the world around us. And, of course, Miss Bailey taught us to serve with humility, act with generosity, treat others with respect, and bring joy to those around us. Beyond all others, though, there is a quote from Miss Q that sticks out on this particular occasion. On the two service trips I took to West Virginia, she would always say, remember to leave the place a little better than when you got there. It's a simple phrase that she repeated over and over again, whether we were on a road stop on the way to West Virginia, a church where we slept overnight, or any of the houses that we worked on during the week. While on the trips, that phrase usually meant we would be sweeping floors, picking up trash, or cleaning bathrooms. This simple notion, however, that you should always be striving to better the world around you means so much more than the physical state of a place. It means that there has been a change of spirit, an uplift of emotion. I believe firmly that the class of 2017 has done that for Spellman. I look out into this crowd and see some of the most intelligent, compassionate, hardworking people I have ever had the pleasure to know. I see before me athletes, scientists, singers, dancers, writers, and artists. In every sporting event I attended, every article of the Spellman newspaper I read, every scene I was able to watch in a Spellman show, I was inspired by the leadership shown by my classmates. For four years, I have been honored to share the classroom with profoundly brilliant minds, to share the stage with such incredible performers and singers, to serve alongside such caring, genuinely faith-filled students. It is with a full heart and great assurance that I can say that my fellow classmates will find success in all of their endeavors. In class, I was honored to sit alongside future engineers, lawyers, writers, teachers, and physicians. With the work ethic, passion, and drive that the class of 2017 has displayed for four years, we will enter our next steps in life with purpose and fervor. Though there is a bittersweet feeling in leaving our home, I believe it would be wise to carry on the words of Miss Bailey as we move into our next steps in life. Let's go, 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 go. Best of luck and God bless you on your journeys. Thank you.
it is now my honor to present the class of 2017's valedictorian, Jonathan Harris. You can't do it. You are just a human being. You don't sleep enough. You get nervous for no good reason. You don't like to read. Math makes no sense at all to you. History is way too boring. There is no way that you can possibly do it. Other people's opinion of you is more important to you than your opinion of yourself. You have to work 20 hours a week, make time for friends, and somehow sleep enough to be able to function. A lot of the time, it just feels like the whole world is against you. And people will tell you, you can't do it. I am sure there were times when you yourself thought you'd never make it to this day. I sure did. But here we are. We all made it. Every single one of you did it. So you have to ask this question. What else can't you do? You might think you can't get through college. You can't get that ideal job. You can't fall in love. You can't buy a house and a car. You can't have your own happy family. Well, now you know. Just because your goal seems difficult or even impossible at times, if you persevere, you will succeed. Hopefully, you have realized the great power that you have. Hopefully you have learned that you should never doubt yourself. Be firm in your resolve, and there is no obstruction that can stand against you. Hold on tight to your dream. As we have seen these past years, life has its good moments, and it has its difficult ones. Over the years, there have been times when happiness rises in senseless crescendo, but also there have been times when the urge to let go of the dream seemed overwhelming. When all rational thinking screams, you cannot, you know that your dream is worthy of all of your positive effort. So try. Go out there into the turmoil of things you can't do and turn them into the reality of what you can do. Save the world. Create your own quiet, happy life. The only person who can really tell you that you can't and be 100% accurate is, well, you. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Class of 2017, it is a special honor to be here tonight to present you to the community as the graduating class of Cardinal Spellman High School. I wish you all the best of God's blessings as you go on to the next phase of your lives. I pray that as you go into the world, something you do or something you say or some way you have of being will touch those around you with the love of God that shines through you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, have faith in God and know that you do not walk alone. God bless you. President Hodes, Principal Kelly, Chair of the Board of Trustees. As Assistant Principal, it's my duty and my privilege to present to you the members of the class of 2017. These young men and women have completed the course of study required of high school students by the Department of Education of the Archdiocese of Boston. They have been approved and recommended by the faculty. They await their diplomas at your hands. We ask that you please hold your applause until the end as I award the following diplomas. Class President 
Emily Catherine Keneally. Vice President Josu D. Medor. <laughs> Class Treasurer Georgian Chen. <laughs> Secretary Michael L. Grant. Alexandra Katiana Alexis. <laughs> Catherine Teresa Archieri. <laughs> Limar Jefferson Baptista. <laughs> Ryan Patrick Barkley. Cassandra Marie Barry. Tara Bienami. Caroline Marie Blackstead. Birdie. J. B. Blaine. Carly Norma Brainerd. Alexis Brickhouse Amizio. Cameron. Jenna Brosnan. <laughs> Ashley Marie Brower. Noel Elizabeth Brower. Michael Stephen. Cahill the third. <laughs> Eric Richard Carlton. <laughs> Savannah Marie Carlino. <laughs> David Jonathan Carmen. Xavier Lamont Theodore Cato. <laughs> Abigail Rose Cirilli. <laughs> Elizabeth Jean Childs. Ethan Roland Child. James Michael Cristiano the Third. Amanda Marie Clarity. Amaris Gianna Colazzo. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Collins. Rebecca. Joseph Francis Concanon. Matthew James Cook. Yeah! 
Joseph Dominic Costa. Michael Patrick Coughlin. Ryan Martin Cornyn. John F. Curran. Megan J. Curry. Adam S. Curtis. Matthew Paul Diorio. Aaron John Demita. Diana Dee Dee Diamond Dickens. Christopher Joseph Diver. Emily Patricia Donahoe. Daniel Philip Doranville. Isadora Ann Regina Dorvillier. Patrick John Doyle. Jonathan Thomas Dudek. Kevin Duderville. Matthew E. Elliott. Thomas John Robert Fernald. Giancarlo Fernandez. Jordi V. Ami. Tavish Fogarty. Brandon Daniel Fontaine. Morgan Elizabeth Fontaine. Bianca Rose Porcucci. Joseph Francis. Stacy Francis. Matthew Joseph Galligan. Caitlin Gemmel. Mary Patricia Gagan.
Sarah Marie Garrity. Brian Gilmartin. Ashley Marie Glynn. Jenna Marie Grimaldi. Laura Helen Gunning. Natalie Hall. Patrick Hansberry. Jonathan Harris. Orlando B. Harris. Margaret M. Hardigan. Shannon Patricia Hazelton. Danielle Jean Percy. Chisholm Ikagu. Dominique Jacques. Cameron M. Johnson. Aaron Jones. Caitlin Joyce. Melina Rose Joyce. Sean S. Kallenberg. Benjamin T. Kazanick. Allison Joy Keenan. Christina L. Keith. David Jerome Kelly. Malcolm L. Kitchen. Grace Victoria Kudla. Taylor Anastasia Lachance. Maeve Lally. Cassidy Elizabeth Latham. Colleen Joan LeBlanc. 
Matthew Patrick Lepinen. James Lisko. Shane Killian Mahoney. Julia V. Maker. Gail Vanessa Marcellus. Annie Catherine Marquisio. Sabrina Ann Mather. Jewel Elizabeth McAuliffe. Christopher Andre McCune. Matthew P. McDonald. Ryan J. McGahee. Haley McGough. Shanquin Meng. <laughs> Jamal B. Mishad. J. Miles Jr. <laughs> Abigail Grace Morgan. <laughs> Emily Morris. <laughs> Christopher M. Nealon. Kelly Nguyen. Linda Nguyen. Carl Gerald Nicholas. Mirdriana Chelsea Noel. Joshua P. Norton. Alexis V. Nye. Juliana Obide. Christopher J. O'Brien. Claire M. O'Brien.
Caitlin A. O'Brien. Megan Elizabeth O'Brien. Curtis John O'Donnell. Osmani Offrey. Samantha Ann O'Hearn. Paige Catherine O'Keefe. Emily Rose O'Neill. Peter J. Panagopoulos. Kevin K. Scott Sanu. Okay, we'll say that one next. Okay, how about you just bring them to me? Okay. Yep. Yep. Just a moment, please. Change your plans. <laughs> All right, Ryan Parcells. <laughs> Alexa Parham. <laughs> Jada Pearson. Devin Renzo Peruzzi. Julia Peterson. Nicholas Phillips. Janae Pierre. Curtis Pierre Louis. Kendall Hitz. Anastasia Humphrey. Amy Povinskis. <laughs> Brianna Quieto. <laughs> Colleen Quinn. <laughs> Colleen Rajat. Timothy Reeder. Oh! 
Thomas Redmond. Giovanni Resendi. Ariana Rodriguez. Brendan Ross. Emily Rothman. <laughs> Salvatore Santone. Kevin K. Scott Sanu. <laughs> Jeremy Taylor Spear. Emily Ann Spur. Augustus Ray Sonnison. John Hale Souter, Jr. Michael Joseph Spizzero. Julia R. Tawil. Clarissa Tessier. Curtis Titus. <laughs> Anthony Tivnin. <laughs> Eric P. Tripp. Patrick Trong. Alex G. Tynan. <laughs> Rachel Rosemary Vellante. Johnson Fu. Sophia H. Walker. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Ward. <laughs> Rachel K. Wahab. <laughs> Nicole Erica. Weatherby. Yes, 
Megan Wenners. Chen Joe. It is my pleasure to present the 2017 graduating class of Cardinal Spelman High School. Please be seated while I call up class president Emily Keneally. Keneally. My fellow graduates, faculty, staff, members of the board, family, friends, and anyone else who's managed to pack into the room today, welcome. We're gathered here today to celebrate a truly momentous occasion in all of our lives. Happy birthday, Eric Carlton. <laughs> And now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's proceed to the task at hand. Today is the first day of the last day of your life. Wait, no, no. Today is the last day of the first day. Mm, that's not it either. Today, today is a day. A day that has been about 1,360 other days in the making. That's kind of a lot of days. Throughout those days, we've laughed together, cried together, thrown water balloons together. Long story short, we, we've made it. Now, my job tonight is not to reflect on the past with you, but rather to look towards the future and maybe leave you feeling inspired. To accomplish this, I've selected five bits of Spellman wisdom, motivational phrases, and inspirational pieces to share. Let's get started. Number one, carpe. If you were here for freshman year, I'm sure you remember this Latin phrase that became a part of our daily routine. Carpe diem, seize the day. It's probably a bad idea for me to be using a quote that encourages you to give little to no thought to the future in a speech aimed at looking towards the future, but we can do both. Set your sights on a goal and work for it but don't forget to stop and smell those proverbial roses. Call home, buy yourself some ice cream, take a nap, treat yourself. Try not to get bogged down by thinking and planning so much for the future that you can't enjoy the path leading up to it. So please, don't forget to carpe the heck out of every diem. <laughs> Number two, if it's a set, keep it together. A phrase repeated by one Albert R. Malo, this would normally refer to papers in an unstapled packet being passed out. However, if we overanalyze, like we've been taught to do in English class, we can probably squeeze out a deeper meaning that applies to the years ahead of us. Think of it in terms of becoming a set with the people around you. If you can form a set with the people who make you feel complete and help you to be your best, then don't let go of them. Relationships formed not only later in life, but also right here at Spelman, are worth keeping. Cherish them. And when you find that set you belong to, keep it together. Okay, moving right along. Number three, get Spelmanized. At first glance, this one doesn't seem very motivational or inspirational, but I do see a lesson in it. 
When entering this school and subsequently watching the classes below us enter as well, we were told to get spelmanized. Although they may not have realized how eerie it sounded at the time, there's something valuable in what they were saying. The takeaway from this is not that they probably put something in the cookies, but rather the idea of embracing new things wholeheartedly. As we leave here tonight, we need to immerse ourselves in the challenges lying ahead while still remembering where we came from. Being Spelmanized is a lifelong commitment. The full Spelmanization package comes with loyal friends, unwavering faith, and impressive knowledge. Number four, one of my personal favorites. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> Every fall, those words echo throughout the Spelman Halls, encouraging us to get out there and beg our family members to buy all those calendars in hope of skipping a final. However, as Mr. Peebles pointed out to us just last year, there is a greater lesson to it all. By selling these calendars, we're really just practicing the ability to put ourselves out there and persuade others. Much like we do with these calendars and our extended family, we have to convince those we come across in life of our value. You, much like those $20 calendars, are a gamble that a lot of people will be willing to take if you get out there and present yourself as best you can. Sell yourself. But don't sell yourself short. And if all else fails, there's one last thing to remember. One last source of wisdom for you all. You know, somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. <laughs> Number five, the song All Star by Smash Mouth. I'll emphasize one line in particular for now. So much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? You'll never know if you don't go. You'll never shine if you don't glow. The singer tells us that the world has so much to offer, so slow down and take the scenic route. He poses a rhetorical question. It makes us realize that there's no shame in exploring your options and taking your time to get where you're going. The singer tells us that life involves taking risks. You won't know if you don't go. It is important, however, not to get too far ahead of yourself. You obviously can't shine unless you glow, much like you can't run before you walk. The song is chock full of good advice, and anytime you need direction, it can guide you. And that's all I've got to give. Four years with you, and I can't think of what else to say. Actually, how about this? One more thing. An addendum to the list of wise words from yours truly, if you'll allow. Number six. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> Just kidding, that's not really it. Instead, I just want to take a moment to remind you what fantastic people you all are. Capable of the extraordinary and compassionate to the maximum. Don't ever forget how truly amazing you are, because I know I won't. Thank you. Graduates, esteemed colleagues, parents, board members, I know that right now all of you are seeking one thing, and you've been seeking it for quite some time, to get the heck out of here. <laughs> for the president to wrap it up. This is essentially what I realized when I stood between you and the door tonight that this particular speech needs to be brief. For sure, all of us are seeking something, but I do know that one thing all of us have sought is happiness. From the moment we are first conceived, we're seeking happiness. 
I first noticed this uh, tangibly when I became a dad for the first time. Thank you, the, appreciate that. <laughs> I watched my daughter through the magic of technology in my wife's womb, and I saw her shift and move to find a comfortable position. And it was then that I realized, even from the moment of conception, we're seeking to be happy. Each of you came to Spelman, you graduates, with that same goal, to be happy. Now you may not have articulated it as such when you were freshmen, nor even as a senior, nor even sitting here today listening to me drone on about happiness, but all of it is because somewhere in all of this is a goal you hope to achieve. A goal you believe is true and lasting happiness. You believe in some way that this lasting happiness exists, yet you have to find it. Certainly this diploma today represents a step on that journey toward happiness, a step towards that yacht in the Bahamas, a perfect job doing what you've always dreamed of, or finally finding inner peace. Lofty goals, to be sure, but without sometimes knowing it, we are on the trajectory toward each of those that they represent. They represent happiness to us. As we know, that without this diploma, college may not be possible. And without college, the job may not be possible. And without the job, the money may not be possible, as your parents, I'm sure, have mentioned a few times. <laughs> and without the money, the yacht may not be possible. And how are you to be happy without the yacht? And so it begins, the journey to happiness. The great Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote that it is the very meaning of life. Happiness, he says, is the meaning and purpose of life, the whole aim and end of human existence. The Catholic Church similarly asserts that we are called to be happy. It is, in fact, our first vocation, as I'm sure you learned in endless hours of theological reflection. The word the Church uses, though, is holy, a theological word, but what is meant is simply to be happy. That is perfectly content, in essence, heaven itself. We see vestiges of this perfect expression of happiness all the time, the extraordinary in the ordinary, the perfect sunset, the perfect dish prepared perfectly to your taste, the perfect first date, the perfect prom dress, the perfect day. All of these are meant to be reminders and a call toward that perfect happiness that we have yet to attain. The word I mentioned a few moments ago that the church used to describe our drive to seek happiness is vocation. Vocation comes from the Latin, word, the Latin root word vocare, a word whose very meaning is to call. That we are called to actually be happy is fundamental to the gospel message. It's also fundamental to part of the hero's journey, a journey made popular by the works of a mythologist named Joseph Campbell and illustrated in pop culture by familiar heroes Luke Skywalker, Frodo Baggins, Spider-Man, Superman. There you go. Each of these classic heroes had a moment that Campbell referred to as the call, where the hero would be called to adventure beyond their safe environs and into the unknown, a call ultimately to happiness, though at the time they may not know it. This call echoes through the centuries and is heard even in this auditorium tonight. It continues to be immortalized in the lives of you all as you begin your hero's journey, answering the call perhaps excitedly, perhaps tepidly, but answering it nonetheless, and stepping out into the unknown, stepping toward happiness, stepping and aspiring toward heroism. What literature and film have given us as examples of heroes who have embarked on a similar journey cannot be outdone by the art of music and what it too has given us as expressions of this age-old truth. I'm thinking of the work of those great modern young philosophers, not unlike Aristotle or Campbell, who call themselves, you may have heard of them, the chain smokers. They have given us most recently in song much to consider in this vein, that we all want to be happy. We are created to seek it, and we are called out of ourselves to find it along a path toward heroism where God willing, we learn to find it not only in the extraordinary things you are no doubt on the precipice of as Spelman graduates, but also in the ordinary adventure of your own hero's journey called life. 
Moments you will reflect on forever as they represent those short, fleeting vestiges of lasting happiness to come. Moments just like this. I thought it would be good this evening to end this year with the class of 2017 the way that I began it with you. Back in the fall at a pep rally. And so, with Aristotle and the chain smokers in mind, Brett, cue the music. Congratulations, class of 2017. Enjoy the journey. So how do we now ask them to sing the alma mater? after that. Thanks, Mr. Hodes. <laughs> but that's what we do, and that's how we end this fantastic celebration. So I'm going to ask Jackie Galvin to come on up. The band is ready. We want to hear all your voices. Please take out your programs. You guys, too, over there in the gym. How are you doing over there, by the way? <laughs> it is to the tune of Let There Be Peace on Earth. Let's raise the roof, raise your voices, and God bless the class of 2017. And God bless you all. Hit it. Thank you had a great night. God bless the class of 2017.